Hi everyone, it's my absolute joy to connect with Nancy Rebecca again. Uh, I know many of you will be really delighted because Nancy and I had two conversations, you might remember last late October, November, when Nancy was talking about the three surges of blue light. Mm. Um, Nancy is a an incredible intuitive spiritual expert, helps people with their develop their intuition, and I'll put her website ben, um, below the video. But yes, you talked extensively about these three surges of blue light and how they were really helping humanity to evolve and upgrade. So today, Nancy is going to have a another update on the upgrade, as it were, in terms of what's happening out there and with the light and perhaps connected to the earth as well. So we are all ears and I'll be putting it in an astrological context as and when it seems appropriate as Nancy goes through. So welcome back, Nancy. Delighted to be with you again. Thank you, Pam. Yeah, it's felt far too long. So um, I've really enjoyed everything that you're putting out there. I mean, you're you're really leading the way astrologically about some new things and I'm loving it. So so thank you for welcoming me back again. So I just to give an upgrade about the uh, an update about the blue light. So it kind of went a little crazy around the end of the year, beginning of the new year. And uh, yeah, those three surges that came through, so many people could feel it. Even people who have no idea, they were just seeing blue everywhere. And that continues to happen. But what has happened since then, we have, I've had a lot of people write and it's like, where's the blue light? What's happening to the blue light now? And so what has been happening to the blue light is that when those surges came through, it really supercharged the earth. And so the earth is really, really glowing blue um, right underneath the surface. There, it's, there's this pulsation that's happening of blue. It is not leaving us. I can't even say it's not leaving us anytime soon. I really, my sense is it's really here to stay. Um, remember the blue light, like the Syrian beings. So there's a lot of star beings that are related to this blue frequency. So they will often say it's not Syrian energy. It's an energy of blue we like to work with. And so they said, just like with uh, Jesus and the Christ force that gave this as an example of this really golden, beautiful golden light, they said, you know, that didn't just start when Jesus came to the earth, that, that, uh, that Jesus loved working with the Christ light. And so it's a frequency. So the Syrians are always good to remind me that, um, it's not the star beings, but it's the actual frequency. And so this blue light frequency, just to remind everyone, if I could put it in a nutshell, it helps, um, dissolve and release illusions. So all the illusions in the world, illusions within you, and it enhances the truth of who you are and it enhances the truth of what's going on on the planet, which wow. is crazy, isn't it? Like some of the things that have been revealed. It's perfect, shocking. actually, astrologically, it's absolutely perfect. <laughs> It's a lot of truth and a lot more to come. It's going to get very long. A lot more to come. But I will say there's this sense of where as humanity would have been shocked a little bit, you know, last year, they would have been shocked or the past few years. Now it's almost laughable. It's like those Keystone cops where you watch them running around and slapping each other and you just can't even take it seriously anymore because you you realize that you've expanded in consciousness and they're still running around like they're in power, like they've got all this power and we're just like, you're not getting it. So <laughs> I'm really noticing that that's happening. But I did start making some videos. It's called the Blue Light Hotspots. Those are coming out. So I talked about it as the, the sun, where if you're looking at the sun, the little video, you'll see the surges, the solar surges. Well, here on earth, it's the same. It looks just like that, but we're having blue light surges. So they're laying it out almost like breadcrumbs where they're saying, okay, we want you to talk about this area first. Like when they asked me, there's a big blue light surge in Algeria. It was just like, okay, 
I don't know anything about Algeria. So they come through and they share with me what, what needs to be shared at that global level, which was an enormous, it was the male energy of the dragon, the female energy of the mermaid, which are two powerful uh, symbolic totems that are a part of a very large river that was dammed back in the 1940s or 50s, and that that dam is starting to break. And so they were saying it was the reunion, and they were great lovers, the dragon, you know, and the mermaid, and that that dam was breaking, they were coming together. So it's been a really fun adventure. I think I always wanted to be an archaeologist, really. <laughs> yeah. And that's so interesting, isn't it, that astrologically uh, in Chinese astrology, and I don't know, I know very little about it, it operates on the Jupiter cycle, it's the year of the wood dragon. And that is that, you know, the dragon energy is about leadership and strength and self-sufficiency. Um, and it's also very interesting that the mermaid energy is related to Salassia. Salassia is mermaid. She was the wife of Neptune in in myth. So it's so interesting that these are coming together at this um at this point because yeah, in fact at the Aries equinox the sun is conjunct Salassia. So um, wow, yeah, wow, really interesting. Yeah, wow. Well, and they took me like to Saudi Arabia where it was, it was this wisdom, this male wisdom this male wisdom that oh absolutely goes far beyond anything i've ever experienced before and it they gave the example of like the three wise men but that there was just this depth of male wisdom that's coming to the surface with the blue there so it's been a lot of fun to go through those um those areas and i'm still learning more and you know my next hot spots coming out of ireland scotland and england wow. And if I could just give you a little tidbit, because it hasn't come out yet, uh, that I was told that it was the original area of the underworld, that it was the safe place of the underworld there, that that no humans were really allowed in there. But then in their kindness, you know, they're like somebody comes and because it was the magic combined with the power that some of the leaders and the kingdoms wished for befriended so anyway it's coming back again so wow uh, that's amazing so that's that's across ireland scotland and england yes and do you have exact locations within those three geographies nancy that you well, can speak about yet well not quite yet but i i did just focus on ireland where they showed me this this kind of bulging that's happening in ireland uh that's coming to the surface and again, what's fascinating, Pam, is that in each of these countries, th they asked me to go beyond the beyond. So if I wanted to talk about any of the kingdom, it's like, no, go further than that. If I wanted to talk about the Druids, nope, go deeper than that. If I wanted to talk about uh, anything, any of the sacred, the stone circles, like Stonehenge, uh-uh-uh, go deeper than that. And then that's when I hit I'm not going to call it gold. I'll call it, that's when I hit blue. And that was like, this was the area, this whole area. And they said it, there was, it was a much larger land mass, but it, it would have been the, the places where, you know, the elf kingdoms and the fairies and the giants and the dragons would have existed in this other frequency dimension and in their kindness uh, yeah, started inviting other people in who may have abused that. Um, and so then they had to retreat to the underworld, but that was just information from yesterday. Uh, so wow. I want to go back to January. So knocking on my door. <laughs> so the, the Syrians, the very tall blue beings wanted to offer a formal introduction to these white robed beings. Now, they did not come into the room with me. They were not present with me, but I could see the vision of them. I could see what they were introducing me to. And it was crazy. I just said, they said, look, we're not gonna do anything about this now because the blue surges were so enormous to the, the psyche and the physical health and the, you know, expansive 
consciousness that, that humanity needs some time to integrate. But there were so many people saying, what's next, what's next, what's next? So they, they are pacing it for us humans. Um, but <clears throat> what, so since then, I they've been coming through. So what they have explained to me, they have they're all in white. They to me they look almost normal human size. They're not tall like the the blue star beings that I've been listening to. They do have um it, their skin is very kind of an amber, I would say a golden amber. It it definitely glows. Uh the eyes are a very light brown or you know, stunning blue, but they, they tend to have darker hair, but they can have also not blonde, blonde, it's not white hair, but somewhere between. And so it's pretty easy for me to communicate with them, which I find fascinating because the Syrians sounded more like whales and dolphins in the beginning, you know, and I wasn't, um, yeah, it's challenging, you know, if you imagine trying to talk to a whale or a dolphin. But since we've gotten over that bridge, that's helpful. But these new star beings, so they just told me we're at the outer edges of the galaxy. We're really far away from you. Really. They're like, think as far as you can think and then go further. So they're very far away. So then they said that they're watching the... um in the galaxy, it's their job to make sure that the entire universe remains in balance. And because they said that, I, I said, well, why are you interested in earth? You know, why are you interested in just this one planet? And they said, because the consciousness uh, is increasing so rapidly on our planet, but it's also about creativity. There's something that they, what I say, covet, uh, that they are like, you all get to express and be flooded with creativity and your nature is flooded. The trees, everything is flooded with creativity. There's all this variety of abundance of life. So in a sense, they see earth as bursting with this beautiful creativity to raise, <clears throat> to grow the universe. Well, so I, that, I've heard this before, that the earth is pivotal in raising the consciousness of the entire universe. Okay. Not just earth itself, but for some reason, it has this, this pivotal um, position, maybe because of the creativity. And just to ask, Nancy, I don't think, I don't know if you have a sense of this, but when you talk about right on the edge of, 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 the, of the far galaxy, is that linked, to, do you think, to Sedna? which has an 11,400 year orbit. And to our knowledge, that is the um, the dwarf planet with the longest orbit, which is very elliptical. So it literally goes right out to the edge of the Oort cloud and is coming back to its closest point to the earth. It won't hit that till 2075, but I mean, we're not far off that if you're looking at an 11,400 yeah. year and what you were talking about last time about this isn't just a transformation for humanity, it's a metamorphosis. Yes. Edna is, is, is the dwarf planet that is linked yep. to metamorphosis. Yes. So do you have yes. a sense it could be linked to Sedna? And these beings Absolutely, linked? because the knowledge that's coming in, it, it, it's almost unthinkable. So that would be a very human statement. You know, it's very unthinkable. Uh, but fortunately, they're helping us, you know, they're going to be helping us adjust and adapt so that we can embrace some of these concepts. And yes, in that, you said, what was the ought cloud? Ought, ought. I think it's uh, O-O-R-T, the ought cloud. Ought cloud. And right at the edge of this this sort of far galaxy, as it were. So okay. said that, you know, it doesn't have a circular orbit, it's elliptical. Okay. It's almost sort of rugby ball shape, but but long yes. enough when it goes right up there. So what it does when it comes closer to Earth is bring back a lot of information from yes. that far point. Yes. Well, it's fascinating that you said that too, because the planet that they're showing me is from, it's not like perfectly round. 
there is a sense that there's a a little bit of an oblong shape because I remember when they were showing me, I thought, well, how do you spin? You know, I guess I'm assuming that all stars and planets spin like the earth does. Uh, I didn't get an answer for that. I think I was just thinking, you know, that curiosity in my mind, but it's interesting that you talk about Sedna and yes, yes, there's very high information that's coming through. Wow. And that is trying to Pluto, which is the planet of transformation, all of this year and all of next. And as you're talking about this planet not being um, circular, the other planet that pops into my head, the other dwarf planet is Homer, that is going to be square to Pluto all this year and all next. Oh, year. my goodness. In, in 150 degree aspect, um, Quincunx to Sedna all of this year and all of next year. And that is about... Oh, I have goosebumps. The really, really powerful symbol for New Earth because she's about regeneration. She can birth babies from all oh. over her body and and regenerate herself from an old crone, crone to a young maiden. So she's incredibly fertile, and she can also go through this metamorphosis herself physically. So I wonder if that's part of the picture too, because the yes, it's absolutely, absolutely. I always talk about from the book of Nancy, I, when I say I can feel something in my bones, when you're talking about it, that's when I know it's, it, it feels true to me. But as you were talking, what I heard was exactly what you described. Humanity is going to be going through that. It's like that surge of creativity that, that we're entering into a time humanity where we're going to become highly productive uh, where it's like, well, I haven't had any energy all my life. Where that, where is this coming from? So highly productive, uh, really want to see the earth uplifted, getting more involved in community aspects and tapping into the higher mind. That's really coming through quite strongly. Yeah, that's Uranus. And Uranus is incredibly prominent this year. Um, because it also rules Aquarius. Pluto has just moved into Aquarius. That has a 248-year orbit, so it hasn't been there since 1798. But Uranus is very, very powerful. And that's all about higher mind, linking with the galactic beings as well. Okay. It's very kind of high vibe. <laughs> I love it. Beautiful, isn't it? It's beautiful. How we, um, yeah. we share. Yeah. Well, and the thing, you know, like, are, you know, often people are like, are we going to be able to handle this? Are we going to make it? You know, what about our mental health? But they are always quick to remind us that, that there is a, a lot of assistance there that we are having a lot of, and not just from the upper world, the, the underworld has really been showing itself just like I described about Ireland, Scotland, and England, and uh, really been showing itself to help us bring that into balance. But I just kind of want to go back a little bit because what surprised me when I was talking about uh, in Saudi Arabia and that surge of, you know, you just want to bathe in that incredible ancient wisdom. You know, it just feels so good. And like, this is what the masculine divine feels like, but it's just been just in many ways heavily suppressed as the feminine divine, but this surge really started coming through. So I'm curious because it really started coming through in um, for, definitely around the end of January. And then it's been, February has just been really this massive buildup of masculine divine. And it's been described to me as holding the beautiful container of the feminine. It becomes a container for the feminine divine to be expressed and so March uh, 15th is because there's so much balance and there's going to be another big surge on the equinox. And then that's when this, and I'll talk about in a moment, this diamond-like silvery energy is going to be coming in. But the earth must go through an enhanced acceleration of balance, male and female within us. Yeah. Yeah, and, and Uranus is fast. Uranus is, is lickety split, super speed. Oh. It's a, you know, it's erratic. It's not a smooth linear energy. It's like jumps. It's like quantum jumps. And that is, as I say, incredibly prominent. And at the end of January, 
was actually on the 20th of January. That's when Pluto re-entered Aquarius and will stay there essentially for the next Okay. Year. So it's a very, very significant energy um, and transit, another 20 years. So this is so exciting. And yeah, the, the, the Aries equinox feels incredibly powerful because... Yes. It is beginning a very, very powerful um, astrological phase with the total solar eclipse. Insanely on. powerful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and all, all the rest in April. I think April is one of the peak months of 2024. So it'll be so interesting yeah. to hear, Nancy, what you are seeing through. through yes, April yeah. So for me, um, when I'm looking at the frequency on the earth, I will always begin with just kind of a line. There's just this line in my sight, my vision. And, uh, you know, I'll see, you know, if it rises or falls, sometimes it falls below the line, sometimes it falls above. So that kind of triggers my third eye, my clairvoyance to be able to say, okay, show me what's going on in this point. Show me what's going on. And then I get to April and it's like, ka -chunk. it's like, on April 8th, the, the solar eclipse, this spike it was off the charts. So this, this is where I sit back and go, <laughs> I won't say the words that I might say, <laughs> but it's like, you know, when I have that awareness of like, oh, oh, <laughs> what are we going to do here? It's so massive. yeah, it's the strongest eclipse of the year by a long <laughs> way, total solar eclipse falling across America, as you know, northeast to southwest. Um, yes. Very powerful. You know, partly we'll see it from Western Europe as well, but it's a, it's an absolute humdinger. And it relates to something I think you're going to be sharing in this session as well. Yes, it does. So um, <clears throat> I went to do a little bit more of a deep dive, and that's where these robed beings came through again. And they're talking about this diamond light with silver sparkles, or it's kind of a blend of silver and, and, and diamonds. Very, 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 very high frequency that's coming in. And what they showed was I... I sat down in meditation and anybody can do this. Always please ground really strongly first, really ground strongly. But I said, let me experience what the world's going to experience on April 8th. I, I want to have this experience ahead of time. And immediately this, this diamond silver beam came right through the top of my head and stopped at the corpus colossum. So it the corpus colossum is white matter. There isn't a lot, there aren't a lot of, there isn't a lot of information that talks about the white matter. I didn't know much about it, but this, this light comes in and the, the corpus colossum is the white that holds the two, the right and left sides of the brain, and it helps it communicate. So what it showed me was it kept getting brighter, but there was a lot clearing out of my corpus callosum. And I will tell you, it felt really, really, really good. And when they shut it off, because they said that's enough for now, <laughs> I'm like, oh, can we just do a little bit more? <laughs> <laughs> Don't take the chocolate away yet. That's right. <laughs> that it felt really good. So one of the things explained, they literally said um, Albert Einstein had an enormous, just to put it in perspective, an enormous corpus callosum, which means that if we think of our, our left and right brain, most people know the word compartmentalizing, you know, we we're good at compartmentalizing just so we can cope with life. But his was so large that it's almost like he had access to all the rooms in the house at the same time, where for the majority of humanity, it's like, you can, you can go through the door in the kitchen, but to get to the bathroom, you need to go through the other door and go up the stairs to the left. You know, that's kind of how our human, human mind works, but his was quite um, expanded. So then they explained um, that when we're going through, and you know, I'll say lightly and upset, but it can be traumatic too. What's happened in the last, you know, four to eight years, 
um, just with the pandemic alone, I don't, I don't need to go through the shopping list of the other things, but they said that can shrink the uh, corpus callosum. You know, that's where we make our mind smaller just so we can handle things. That's where we, you know, try to stay within the, you know, of the bowling alley where the gutter, we don't want a gutter ball, you know, so we're making it really small. So then we have less access to our thought process. How does this look? in the body, you're having trouble finding your words, you're having trouble stringing thoughts together. Um, it's just kind of sh a shocky brain. So what's gonna happen, what they're showing me on April 8th, which I'm like a kid on Christmas morning, is that that's gonna come in and start expanding our white matter. So I was laughing as I was getting ready this morning. They're like, no, you're not gonna have like aliens <laughs> have the big head but you could be, you know, as we evolve, we could be heading in that direction. So then, all right, so we're still learning about that, but it's already starting to come through a little bit. But then the end of April, I was really curious about, because then it's almost like they open the floodgates and then this enormous diamond, very awakening, conscious energy of wisdom and knowledge is just going to pour into the earth. And because our corpus callosum has been expanded a bit, we're going to be able to take in that wisdom and knowledge in a way we couldn't today or tomorrow. Does that sound crazy? No, no, it sounds spot on. <laughs> it sounds absolutely spot on. So it's so, so interesting because this, um, total solar eclipse on the 8th of April, and that's the date exactly you mentioned, Nancy, is in Aries. Aries rules the head. Oh, no. That's <laughs> and, awesome. <laughs> and you were also mentioning, certainly when we were chatting before, that this is going to be a very big healing for people. Yes. This total solar eclipse is within a minute, one minute of a degree conjunct Chiron. One minute. And Chiron is where we've been wounded, um, where we felt um, victim, victim consciousness. We could have been traumatized. And Chiron, if you're born with Chiron in Aries, and I've often mentioned this in videos because it's been in Aries a while now, is where in your early life you might have felt like I don't have a right to exist. Um, however, that is meant to turn into leadership for you as you move through your life. You know, it's this is your issue to deal with as you move through your life. So it's so interesting that that Chiron is exactly, you know, within a minute of the total solar eclipse, the sun and moon together, which will heal that any sense of victim consciousness of I don't have a right exactly. to exactly step into our sovereignty. Wow. It's also fascinating that Chiron astronomically orbits between Saturn and Uranus. And Saturn is where we're tight, where we're narrow, where we're constricted, you know, what has been. It's linked to fear, where we contract. It's linked to, uh, yes. it rules Capricorn, the powers that, that we've had in our world running the show. So there's this sense of limitation and contraction that's part of the um, mythology of Saturn. But Chiron orbits, as I say, between Saturn and Uranus, and Uranus is the plant of awakening. Uranus is the plant of expansion in, in that way. It's, the, it's, it's connecting to the galactics. It's this sudden burst to another level of consciousness, wow. which you never have. And on the 20th of April, we have this Jupiter-Uranus conjunction, which is just going to be boom. It's just going to be like an explosion of light an awakening and higher consciousness and a shattering of old belief systems mm -hmm. potential to just jump us to a higher understanding, a higher state of being, you know, lickety split. So what you're saying unknowingly is, is perfect for the astrology we're going through. Because although that Jupiter-Uranus conjunction only ha it happens every 13 to 14 years, it is particularly strong because Uranus is the ruler of Aquarius and Pluto has moved into Aquarius, which intensifies that whole thing. Wow. So, you know, because the wow. is multi-layered. And so it's a big deal. It's a really big deal, particularly because it's coming after that total solar eclipse in Aries. Yes, yes. So well, sense there, Nancy. 
you're making so much sense because I wanted to, I could feel myself wanting to kind of soften uh, what happens, what they were explaining that happens to corpus callosum. So they were talking about like PTSD, you know, post-traumatic stress syndrome. You know, they are like from, whether it's from childhood or from war or from, you know, being hurt or harmed. And they were talking about those hits to the corpus callosum. Uh, and so, so when you're talking about Chiron being a healer, that's what they were talking about. Like there's enormous healing that's taking place. I was, I'm a nurse, so I was super excited and I was an intensive care nurse. I worked in, you know, neurology and cardiology, but so immediately I went to go look it up and they were talking about even in like early childhood that, you know, you could be an infant, you could be a child if it's been a rough uh, home environment that the corpus callosum will, uh, it can kind of minimize going on one side of the brain and send most of the energy to the other side of the brain. And I thought, wow, isn't that curious? So there's, and I just want to say there's certain, there's supposed to be certain foods and things like that, that can help with that. And you can meditate on that. But they were saying it's enormous healing for so many people who've had so much trauma in their life. So I wasn't even going to bring that up. And, uh, it's, you know, it's so clear in the astrology. It's very interesting. And also Uranus being so strong, as I say, it's, um, in it's, it's less positive expression. It's very linked to mental illness, trauma, PDST. Uh -huh. I think to kind of, because it's an erratic energy it can be linked to instability and it's linked yes. to the mind. So there can be a, a mental instability as a result of the trauma. And it wow. sounds like that's going to be healed too. Yes, yes. Well, and it, you know, as a nurse, it it's like often, <clears throat> I, you know, I know people who struggle and I've worked with, you know, the military and teaching, you know, meditation and uh, that, that trauma that they've experienced and that just to get through each day requires a lot of energy. And so for me, with that nurse mind, I try to imagine how is that possible, you know? But again, that's the thinking mind of the human, right? And we are being um, encouraged in a unwavering way to expand our mind, right? To see all possibilities that, and I've been knowing this in medicine because I'm a nurse that in medicine, we're going to be making leaps in what's going to happen in medicine. What was just not even possible even five years ago. So I'm excited about hearing what you had to say about that. Yeah. And Jupiter being the plant of expansion is just going to make this like infinite possibilities for our mind. There can be so many new inventions, so much new medical technology, healing technology. I yes. think a lot of that could come through the, the the reconnection to our galactic families and all the information that comes from, from there as well. It, it yeah. is incredibly exciting period. So I really encourage people to live in their Uranus, as it were, to live in the excitement Rather yes. than go into their Saturn, which is the fear and the contraction. Yes, yes, because and they explain it as uh, the corpus callosum, like it gets dried out. Right. It's it's almost like when I see someone's energy fields very dry, what that tells me is that that they have neglected self nourishment. Right. That they they haven't watered the plant you know, in with me getting a massage or, you know, uh, going out and watching a play or something, you know, they haven't done any of that self-nourishing thing. So they were showing the corpus callosum quite similar. And part of that is, well, first of all, I'm just going to say they are super excited about what we're doing. They're like, we're so excited that, that the way they explain it, that express it, it's like, um, it's like, you know, they're all kind of gathered around and it's like the clock is ticking and they're not quite sure which way it's going to go. And then it started going 
And they just cheered and celebrated because they were like, they made it, they made it this time, this time. And that's the other thing about the ancient civilizations, you know, of, of really going through those cycles before. And now it looks like this time uh, we're going to make it. I am an optimist by nature, Pam, but yeah, it's relentless. Yes. But when I was hearing them, I, I was very excited about when they were talking about ancient civilizations. And that's when they said to me, you know, there are more ancient civilizations that have tried this before Lemuria and before Atlantis, but they show it as like a beautiful garden and then just another layer of a beautiful garden. So each of these ancient uh, high level civilizations really contributed a lot to the success that we may find this time. Yeah, that's beautiful. And my sense is that we really are breaking a, a, re a repeat cyclic pattern this time yeah. because we as humanity have been able to expand our consciousness sufficiently to access higher timelines, you know, expand our minds, expand our hearts. So it has been our work as humanity that has helped us make this jump. Yes. And, it. and just ju one quick thing back to the Corpus um, Colossum that you were talking about, Nancy. I was speaking to two ladies the other day who do absolutely beautiful work with horses that are traumatized and they mm -hmm. use craniosacral healing um, therapy that works on the Corpus Colossum in horses. Wow. They heal the trauma in horses. Oh, wow. Sorry, I threw you up. That was at a tangent going back, but but yeah, isn't that interesting? Another connection. So that yeah. is really interesting because my very strong sense is that we're going to break the pattern. We're going to break through what we have never been able to break through before to a whole different state right. of being. Right. And we have to, right? It's like, it's like the train has left the station. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's already happening, even if you're not aware and, and anybody can look up Corpus Colossum online and read, you know, more about it or watch a YouTube video. But the, this this train is already moving and picking up speed and and we're all going through it together. And s many people will blissfully go through it and just isn't life great or wow, I'm changing or what's happening, you know, how I look at things differently. And then there are going to be those who fight against it, who will kind of drop back into, I'm shown, drop back into the emotional driver, because that's what we're used to. We're used to being so driven by the emotions that yeah, we may have an expansion here, but our fall, our default is we may go back. Well, what, what am I feeling about that? What am I feeling? And the feelings are just like very choppy waters right now, you know, on the whole earth. So we're having to let go of one way of navigation. You know, it's kind of like, you know, going from smoke signals to, you know, the telephone to the cell phone to telepathy you know, it's, it's happening. So. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and that's wonderful that you bring that up because the, the energies geomagnetically, electromagnetically are very jazzed up because mm. we have a drop in the suns and the earth's magnetic shield. Therefore, and also we're at the peak of a solar cycle 25 early this year. So we're going to get a lot more solar flares, a lot mm. more solar activity in general, and they kind of jazz, jazz our system up. So hence, um, for some people like myself and many, many others, it's very hard to sleep with other people, yes. being fatigue, etc. But I, th there was a beautiful phrase that somebody I follow on Facebook, Jason Estes, used. He said, think of this as stem cells for your soul. Mm. Welcome it, you know, welcome them in, however uncomfortable they are physically and unused yeah. to them that we are, welcome them in as evolutionary ingredients. And that's something yes. I've been talking about a lot too. So it, you know, try not to go, you know, resist. Right. Welcome them in and yeah. try and be in a state of stillness, openness, ground and earth as often as you can yes. on the grass. So you're just really 
you know, like a like a flower opening to whatever is coming yes. in, because that is such a potentially auspicious conjunction between Jupiter and Uranus for our evolution. Yes, you know, don't miss the boat. It's a beautiful opportunity for us. It. it... <laughs> It is. Yeah. It's so, it's so exciting. And I am, I am literally going to be in the path of the solar eclipse. So I, uh, I found out that my brother and sister-in-law were going and then my parents were going and it was like, I'm inviting myself. And, uh, so we'll probably all be together jam packed in some parking lot somewhere because so many people are going to be going to that area. Uh, so, and I'm, ex yeah. And, and Arkansas is where I'm going to be. And in the ground is so many diamonds. They have a crater diamond state park where you could pay $15 and go in and dig for diamonds and you get to keep everything you find. So I'm not only going to be on crystals and diamonds, but then under the solar, you know, eclipse. And uh, it's just, yeah, it's exciting. But this is the one thing if, if everyone in the world is listening to this right now and they're like, oh my gosh, <laughs> what do I need to do? Do I need to meditate more? Do I need to make altars? Do I need to do this? The number one thing you need to do right now is do something different in your life. Interesting. That's Uranus. Okay. <laughs> because what, what they said to me once, Nancy, we need you to get out of the house because we're, you know, we're still post COVID but we need to get out of the house. Okay. What do I need to do? They said, we need you to go to, um, do something really different. Okay. They said, we need you to go to a poetry slam now. Uh, so a poetry slam, right. Is when someone's on the stage and they're talking. Now I thought they wanted me to get up on the stage and do poetry. I'm like that. That's like a really left turn for me, <laughs> you know? And they said, Oh no, no, no. You don't need to be up on the stage, but just be in the energy of it. Go get yourself a cup of coffee and sit at a table and just rather than, you know, uh, read a book or watch television or whatever, just go do something different. And it's so easy. They're saying, just turn left out of your driveway instead of the right, instead of turning right. And so that's right now is the number one thing. We want to stretch the neuroplasticity of our brain. We want our mind to be more open, more flexible, less rigid and limited. And just by saying, I'm going to drive home by the water, it's going to take me an extra 20 minutes, but I'm expanding the neuroplasticity of my brain. And I know this April is ginormous, but I'm seeing it go all the way at that. I'm not going to call it intensity because it's kind of, it's going to be a little feel good, you know, but until about the middle of June is what I'm hearing. And, uh, but then 25 and 26, it, it's going to keep shifting and changing and expanding. So we're, we're, we're step, we have stepped in the middle of it right now. It's wow. exciting. But this yeah. is a big ignition point, essentially, yes. for the Earth. And it's interesting you're talking about moving away from rigidity, because that, again, is Saturn. Move towards Uranus, which is change, variety, do something different. Mm. Step into mm. what you have already outgrown. Yes. The big message with Uranus. Do the new, you know, step into yes. your real sense of authenticity and unique essence that has been suppressed through society or habit or whatever so it's so exciting yes. but it really does feel like it, it does feel like a trigger point or an ignition point for the whole big surge of humanity's evolution that's what it feels like astrologically and what you're yes. saying spiritually and yes. energetically yes yes and it it's almost like and give each other grace yeah. because we're all so um we're changing so rapidly it's like don't don't hang them on the the coat hook you know just give each other some grace or my sister calls it a hall pass you know give them a hall pass it's like so they're gonna have some bad days and they might need to um uh clean up you know a little bit of mess but but to give each other you know the grace that is uh, needed because we're all going through it. And I'm, I'm not saying abuse. I'm not saying hurting or harming. I'm just talking about 
you know, if, if somebody gets triggered in a little way, just compassion, have compassion. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Live from the heart, live with love. Yeah. 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 Don't yeah. judge. We're moving away from judgment and that kind of hilarity. So yeah. Yes. Open of compassion. I think yes. that's where we're headed. And yeah. Wow. Yeah. And, yeah. and we also talked about more um, later in April. Now, so I don't know if you want to talk about that because you're talking about um, plasma, new levels of plasma light codes coming in as well. <gasps> oh, how could I forget that? Well, because there's so much happening, right? There's so much happening. So <clears throat> you have this diamond, just like a diamond can cut. Uh, crystals, right? And make them into shapes or gems. Uh, and diamonds can cut diamonds and make these beautiful shapes. But so it's a very hard, hard um, gem. So it's like that in the human energy field. It's like, let's cut the BS. That's what I heard. It's cutting the BS. <laughs> and so, you know, in the ways that the blue light you know, has prepared us all these years to drop a lot of illusion. This is like the exclamation point at the end of the sentence. It's like, we've been being prepared, you know, it's like the, the turkey being basted, you know, and now it's time to go into the oven. And uh, so this diamond that's coming in has these silver, it's this photonic light. Well, all of it's, um, to me, when I think of photonic light, it's like a tear that comes down your cheek. It's not just like a glass of water droplet. It's not that a tear has so much in it. And, and that's what these droplets are like. Now, these droplets are coming through right now. I mean, they're, they're especially um, heading towards March 15th, uh, but they're coming in and they've explained it like it's going to land on the skin to see if you have a reaction to it. So it's almost like if they're gonna give you a shot, like sometimes they'll prick the skin to make sure you're not allergic to whatever they're gonna give you an injection about. And <clears throat> so this will happen. And inside that those photonic light codes is wisdom that goes beyond a wide wiseness that we ever knew was possible. And the knowledge collected connected to the galactic center. It's almost like it um, we're more tapped in or even tapped in at all in a way of having almost a direct access. Does that make sense? Like a direct absolutely. access. Yeah, to absolutely. That because, you know, again, what's interesting, all of this year and all of next year is the dwarf planet Varda is exactly conjunct the galactic center and Neptune is squaring them. Now, Neptune is um, is source really, it's unconditional love, it's a connection to oneness, it's healing energy, um, it's ethereal, you know, it's beautiful. But Varda um, in the creation myth, along with her husband Manway, they were said to create the universe. And her role, Varda's okay. role, was to put the place the sun and the moon and the stars in the heavens and set them on their course. So they were part of the original creation myth, which even Tolkien writes about in his book, Cimmerillion. Uh -huh. So this is massively ancient wisdom between mm -hmm. Varda yes. and Neptune. You know, this is way back, way back, way back. And of course, all of that knowledge is held in the water because mm -hmm. some of the water on earth is up to 4.5 billion years old. Mm -hmm. And the knowledge is still held there. It's never left, it's never gone. Right. Right. And Neptune is water as well. It's linked to water. Yes. Neptune is water. Well, and that that um <clears throat> that has been coming to the earth forever. It it we are surrounded by it. When we're swimming in the water, we're surrounded, we're being bathed in that knowledge. But if all our rooms are closed, you know, we don't have access, we don't have a way that we can access that wisdom you know, it can just be right up under our nose and we can't access it. That's what's happening now is, is my sense is that we're going to have finally get to open our front door and bring the package in. 
and um, and that's really exciting. Well, and and Nancy, as a result of this, particularly what's happening in late April, do, are you seeing more connection with our our galactic families, reconnection with our galactic families? Yes, I I I have to say yes, and um, I know that there's a lot of people that they love the star beings and everything. I'm, I'm really a very earth kind of person. And, um, it's like watching Star Trek, you know, on television can feel so kind of out there. Well, that was fun. Now let me get back to work. That that's probably, you know, very much my Capricorn side, but, um, but I have to admit it, it's happening. <laughs> It's just happening. I might as well expand the neuroplasticity of my mind. <laughs> the galactic influence is is coming in so strongly to where one moment, you know, we might be afraid of it. And the next moment it's like, oh, there's our family, you know, there's our ancestors, there's, you know, and yeah, that could take another 30 years you know, for us to fully realize that, but oh no, it's, it's happening, Pam. As I kick the dirt, I'm like, wow, <laughs> I'm going to have to really open my mind for this. <laughs> oh, I think you're ahead of the rest of the pack, Nancy, actually. So uh, you're going to have four, you're our John the Baptist with this. You're going to have the foreknowledge. So, so this is just immensely exciting. And, and, you know, from my point of view, that's what I'd encourage people to feel, feel the excitement. Just, you know, as long as you can drop into stillness, bare feet on the grass, ground yourself so you've got an anchor in yourself, feel the excitement, but let the anchor in the center come from yourself, come from your heart. Don't scatter your energy on big, scary things everywhere. Just forget, right. forget all right. that because you're leaking power. Focus on this amazing once in many, many lifetimes opportunity, if ever, actually. I think yes. it's, uh, it's completely unique to yes. really make that jump beyond everything we've ever known in, in all of our yeah. lifetimes. Immense, yeah. Nancy. It, we don't have words no. to describe it in our human language. And then society Maybe. is really yeah. going to change in unimaginable ways, isn't it? Yes, yes, absolutely. And I, I did just want to mention, again, because the blue light just really kind of flooding into this conversation, the blue light's never going away. You know, it's like you just had that, that great time with the blue surge and it just took you to another level. And that is not finished. That continues. But they, the blue star beings just came in to show me an image of, it, it's like, you know, we're going through the equinox, which will be enormous balancing. And then, you know, the solar eclipse <clears throat> and that surge to the corpus callosum. And then at the end, that wisdom and coming in. And so we're going to be shedding a lot. So the blue light is helping with that, but they do show the blue light really picking up again in May and June. I haven't looked beyond that, but they're showing me like the janitor at the school. <laughs> 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 they just come behind and they're sweeping, you know, and they're helping to kind of clear out and calm things. So they've really uh, just wanted to express the that of the angelic realm of the ascended masters realm our loved ones who are on the other side the star beings uh the nature spirits uh everybody is rooting for us right now and as humans oh my gosh i sometimes i try to imagine what we must look like to them but but we are getting it a lot more i just want to express that to the whole all of humanity you are getting it a lot more than you think you are. Yeah. 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 That is just beautiful, Nancy. And, you know, a beautiful place to end, really, unless you've got anything else that you feel is important to share with us or. No. That's a beautiful, no. that's a beautiful closure. I mean, this has been so exciting. I love my conversations with you. I always feel <laughs> We're going over the jumps and over the jumps and you know it's 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 just fabulous and it really helps people to trust that sense of expansion in our consciousness trust yes trust the invisible as i say so often we have always created from the invisible trust the invisible trust the invisible i did hear uh, someone talking the other day it might have been greg braden or someone but they said 
what is conscious to what we can see is 10% of what's available to us. The other 90% is invisible. Yeah. yeah. We might as well make peace with it. But Pam, you're like a sister from another mother to me. It's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wait, your frequency feels like mine. It just feels like, yeah. So I just love to be in the world at this time with you, uh, helping to up, uplift ourselves and humanity. And so, and your Sunday uh, meditations, I watch them clairvoyantly. And I will tell you, last Sunday, the the light was so blinding and so encompassing in the world. So you are oh. encouraging that is really helping a lot. Oh, bless you. You know, it, it's, you know, it was just such a simple idea, really, but people are reporting back you know, this incredible spreading of light that gets stronger and bigger across the globe. And other people are seeing that as we set off, uh, the animals are coming with us, you know, of all kinds. Yes. yes. And moving across rivers and mountains and we're gas. Yes. And she described it, this particular lady, like an army of love on the move. An yes. army of love on the move. And she yes. said she was just weeping through the whole meditation. It was so profoundly loving and, uh, yes. and it's, it's like a tsunami of love and how easy is that 15 minutes a week well you know well you exactly exactly well and I didn't even talk about the mountains and I didn't talk about the animals so we'll definitely have to do this again sometime beautiful Nancy you are a joy to share with and um thank goodness you are in the world right now to help to guide oh, us I love this oh, conversation thank you. God bless you, Nancy. Thank, Thank you, you a million you. fold and, and mm -hmm. love to everybody out there. Thank you so much for listening. Lots of love. Bye for now. Okay.